a non-encompassing science. It is a science indeed. It is not something one should take lightly. And the difference between popularized magic, such as Harry Potter, and true magic is vast. Because magic is not Harry Potter. Harry Potter is one of its various manifestations. But there are over a thousand of such manifestations. 1,024 to be exact. This has its own explanations, and we have searched for these explanations together and found them. Throughout these past three years, we've come a long way, and I hope that the time we've spent in our research was interesting and fruitful. At least it certainly altered your worldview and allowed you to rid yourself of certain illusions. And the current task at hand, before we take the next step, as we make a smooth transition to the next stage, a deeper, more general and revealed subject of monotheistic religions, such as Christianity, Judaism and Islam. Before doing that, let's quickly go over what we have learned and try to summarize it all. Namely, why was this path and the diligent dissection of myths, why all of it was necessary? Every lesson was started by saying that magic and its keys are hidden in myths, that they are encrypted and coded within them to remain unchanged. So the main epochal things don't get lost so they don't get worn out. Thus, they must be presented in a way to firstly, not pose a certain danger, and secondly, so they could forever remain unaltered as keys, regardless of what point in time the seeker looked upon these myths, whether it was 300 years ago, during the Renaissance, at the beginning of the 20th century, or nowadays. The keys remained unchanged. A whole other story is that one must dig through a significant amount of rubbish in order to find these keys, rubbish that is abundantly present around the object of your search, thereby significantly increasing the value of the finding. Therefore, let's start from the beginning. When we speak of magic, we speak first and foremost of some force that is needed for something. It doesn't exist on its own, as doesn't any science, any theory or practice. It exists to be applied. Since the use of magic is not common to man, one can conclude that this science is made neither by man nor for man. This is why, in order to understand it with the human mind, one must consider for a moment that what was created as the development of magic disciplines was not made for you to use. It wasn't made for humans. Man has a need to comprehend. No one can take that away from him. But with this comes a significant amount of obstacles. That way only the most worthy, the most persistent, most determined, clever and hard-working ones can reach the said key. Magic manifests itself in life and in people's consciousness in a way that it keeps on adding extra complications to each stage of its comprehension. And one could say that possibly these complications are unnecessary and that it is akin to a glass bead game. However, this glass bead game is necessary for the completion of the main task. And it is not meant for amateurs.
Meiji of all generations, who left tangible pieces of work after themselves, every one of them said our books are not for everyone. Everyone is welcome to read it, but they are not for everyone. Such is the price of the matter, such are the rules of the game. They should be perceived for what they are, and a human sense of justice would not be applicable here, such as that, well, if I want it, it should be given to me. No, no one is entitled to anything. The magic discipline has been developing for a very long time. The degrees of its development vary depending on different schools, different directions, different paths. And we have already begun to touch upon these paths, and for the most part these paths are going to be more or less revealed when we begin to look into magic orders. But any magic order is always built upon a certain paradigm, upon a certain founding model, and these models had to be developed first. Information about how these models were developed and why they were necessary, all of that is told in myths. And it might seem at first that they are silly fairy tales put together for the purpose of entertainment. But the deeper we dig, the more we become convinced that they are in fact not at all tales. And that they weren't written for the purposes of soul amusement. However, their outermost layer is actually a form of entertainment. But that doesn't mean that their purpose is to assume this layer. On the contrary, the layer conceals the essence. Magic as a science, magic as an instrument, would not be necessary without a cause. And this cause lies within the forces of this world that need to be restrained. Some of you are familiar with these forces. They are the forces of the elements. The elements are self-sufficient and cunning. They lack a component that would make them serve humankind. Elements are not meant to create. They simply exist on their own. Man is not an object of their interest, nor is the world or civilization. They are simply not interested in anything else except for themselves. But the elements are of interest to those for whom these forces represent the one and only source of existence, one and only source of life or source of self-manifestation. Humankind falls in those ranks as well, because it is dependent on the elements. The four elements that we work with derive from the Northern European school of thought. Thus, the Northern European magic, along with the Northern European mythology, which includes Egypt, are built upon the function and comprehension of the four elements. Fire, earth, air and water. In a world that is built upon the law of equilibrium, these forces must be absolutely equal and self-sufficient. Not one of them can prevail or consume the other. This is why the mechanisms of interaction between the elements or the act of their mutual pursuit, and this pursuit is not a natural occurrence. This pursuit was created so that the interaction, the conflict of the elements, would awaken the process of creation. Any creation arises from a conflict. Let's say there used to be something set in place, 
and that something didn't satisfy anyone or stopped satisfying somebody, therefore it was time to introduce certain mechanisms that would inspire a conflict. So the conflict was inspired.